So now we're going to move on to our first guest, who I mentioned earlier, uh, the Honorable Linda Kropp, uh, who has uh, graciously agreed to sit with us today so we can, one, recognize her for Women's History Month, but also to talk a little bit about uh, what you've been doing. We haven't seen you in a little bit, and I know you've been busy, but also to talk about where we are, your, your views about where we are in the District of Columbia. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, good afternoon, and it's a pleasure joining you and your audience today. <laughs> so um, first, uh, how's life? How have you been doing? I'm challenged, but not overwhelmed. We're all yeah. here, we're vertical, and hopefully we'll move out of this pandemic so that the district can continue to flourish and grow. Right, right. So Ms. Ms. Grubb, when you when you sit back now, uh, sort of uh, almost in the back seat, because you you know don't have to be in the driver's seat anymore, and look at where the city has come, you know, since your service uh, on the council and as chair, I, I want people to also remember. Uh, that you also served on the DC School Board and you were also a uh, Ward 4 council member uh, to the DC City Council. So you have a long history of service in this community. Um, but now that you um, have retired and can kind of sit back and, and watch, what, what, what impressions do you have about where we are in the district right now? Well, there's no question that the district was uh, moving forward. Uh, the population was growing. Uh, the pandemic has had a, a serious impact on the district. And uh, I don't think people realize how big it is. Um, but it has grown. I think what the district has to do, however, is make sure that we keep affordable housing. Uh, in the district, while the population is growing immensely, um, and uh, and we want that, we need revenue, but we also need to have a diversity of income levels in the district, and mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that the people who work in the district can also live in the District of Columbia. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges uh, that we have once we get the economy back on tr on track from this pandemic. Uh, we are a, a hospitality town and uh, we our revenue depends on people coming to the district an awful lot. And we know that travel has been very light uh, since this pandemic happened. So in order for us to continue to fund the needs of the residents of the district, we must ensure that our economy is on uh, solid ground. And we must also, I believe, while we watch the population grow, that we must keep affordable housing in this city. When you were chair of the council, um, what was the biggest challenge that that you faced? Was it was it the control board? Was it again? Was it housing? Uh, when you look back over that period, um, what are you most proud of about overcoming uh, during your administration? Well, when I first uh, became chair, um, we had the control board. And um, we needed to get rid of the control board so that the representatives of the citizens would be the ones they elected and not people who were appointed. Um, so the district in record time, we were able to remove the tr control board from uh, making decisions. Thankfully, uh, we acted in a very positive way and the control board rarely changed anything that the council and the mayor had put forward because we had done our job so good. But what we also had to do that I am extremely, I have great pride is that we had to bring the economy back. Uh, the district's economy had really faltered. We had lost a, a large tax base uh, from not only our residents, but also from businesses that did not locate in the District of Columbia. So we had to bring prosperity back to the district. And I'm very pleased that I played a major role in that. In addition to that, many people forget that uh, the district had lost um, control somewhat of the uh, Wilson building. And uh, the federal government had moved into, or they were preparing to move into the Wilson building. And uh, I was able to uh, keep the Wilson building as the seat of government for the District of Columbia. And it's our only presence on Pennsylvania Avenue. 
is the Wilson Building. And I felt it was extremely important for the District of Columbia and its citizens to have that representation on Pennsylvania Avenue. You know, you're right. I mean, I had forgotten about that my, myself, uh, but I know that it was for the Washingtonians, it just didn't feel right. And it feels, we, we need to be there on Pennsylvania when the president uh, is inaugurated. And we go back to those uh, inauguration parades and, and to come by you know, the seat of our local government. So we really praise you for that. And and your leadership on as a chair of the council, I think, and, and I don't think it's necessarily because you were a woman, but it was just because you had, you showed or demonstrated great leadership with, I mean, 12 other members uh, who had really diverse um, uh, needs and desires and opinions and how you manage that. I mean, it was something to marvel at. And um, how how did you how did you maneuver? What were some of your challenges in dealing with members, your your uh, fellow council members? Well, Denise, you said that I had been a member of the board of education, but I think equally as important, I'm a former teacher and a former guidance counselor. And uh, I believe that those skills as a teacher and particularly as a guidance counselor helped me to be able to maneuver with a very strong council. Uh, everyone had their own independent thoughts. They have their, it's only one vote for each member. And uh, to be able to bring those individuals, diverse thinking group of people together to move forward on behalf of this city and its citizens, uh, it took the skills, I think, that I had learned as a counselor. Well, even uh, uh, current Chair Mendelson has uh, complimented you on your leadership. I heard that most recently, and I said, yes, well-deserved. Uh, and you also, I think, were helpful among other members of the council to usher in more women. Uh, on the city council. I mean, now we have a majority female council. It's not, I don't think it's the first time, but um, what, do you, what are your views on, on women and uh, leadership in the city? I think it's extremely important to, for women to be represented. And the district is sort of an anomaly. Uh, we have been fortunate enough to have such a wise population to understand what benefits uh, female representation could bring so that we have a, a female uh, mayor, we have a female representative on the Hill, and we have in the past had um, the chairman of the council. Um, and it's important, usually women were in the background, they were uh, involved in politics, but working in the background to help someone else uh, become an elected official. So it's important uh, for women and their views um, to be represented because there's so many women who are citizens, um, who have certain issues that uh, when a female is elected, they can bring that viewpoint uh, to the laws that they enact in this city. So it's very important. It's very important for us to help groom people to follow us and for us to extend our hand and, and pull them along. And and also, I'm, I'm curious about your views on how the city has diversified. You know, we were we've gone from Chocolate City to you know, I guess Chocolate Swirl to now it's more like uh, Chocolate Chip. <laughs> I'm not sure how we want to frame it, but you know, we are the African American population here has reduced quite a bit. Uh, more of our residents have moved outside of the city. Uh, even though it's funny, Marylanders still consider themselves Washingtonians all the time, and they're really interested in D.C. politics. But did you see that coming when you were chair? Uh, yes, I did, because uh, once you start seeing um, the price of uh, housing going up, um, you know that it, there's a certain group of individuals who have uh, more money. Um, the black population owned an awful lot of property in the District of Columbia. It was very hard for many people whose parents may have bought a home for $40,000 and someone comes in and offers them $500,000 for it, for them not to accept it and then move out. But in doing that, it does change the population. And as um, higher rents and higher cost of housing came about, uh, it required a higher income. And so now it's extremely important 
for us to make sure that we keep um, a certain amount of affordable housing in this city so that if someone leaves the city, it's by their own choice and not by the financial choice that they can no longer afford to live in this city. Uh, it's important for us to keep diversity uh, in the city. It's important for people who work in the city to be able to live in the city. And so I think at that point, the city itself has to do things to uh, maintain this diversity. Last question. Um, uh, I keep calling you Chairman Crop because that's what I like to call you. Uh, <clears throat> but it's about statehood. I mean, we just had the hearing last week. We've gone, I think, further than we've ever gone before in uh, making this a reality. Of course, some, you know, are still very pessimistic about, you know, whether it, we're going to actually achieve statehood or not. But this was a battle that you all fought as well. Uh, and so what, what's your take on where we are right now? And, and you know, if we're, if, this, if we're finally there. I am very pleased that uh, the discussion is at the level that it is. You know, the insurrection that happened on uh, the 6th is just one other example of how uh, statehood for DC is needed. And uh, in this case, it would have benefited everyone, um, our mayor, who would be our governor, should have had the ability to call out the National Guard. And if so, we would not have had the problems that existed. The District of Columbia uh, has more, uh, po a larger population than many other states. Uh, we pay more taxes in several other states. Our men and women go and fight in wars and lose their lives on behalf of this country. Uh, like um, people from many other states, and we should not be disenfranchised. So um, I think we ought to keep fighting for statehood. Um, I don't know, like you, if, if it will happen, but we got to keep going, going strong and pushing very hard. Well, I want to thank you so much for spending time. I, I, I just wonder, do, do, you and the, do you and the ladies ever have like girl talk, you and Mayor Bowser and Mayor Pratt and any of the other members, do you all ever get together and, and, and have sort of those off the record conversations? We do from time to time. <laughs> and Mayor Bowser is doing a fantastic job doing an extremely trying time. Uh, she has uh, had to put herself out when we've had a president that was not the best for this city and she has risen to the occasion. Uh, but we do get together, um, Charlene Drew Jarvis, uh, Carol Schwartz, um, Sharon Pratt. We have uh, talked to each other since being out of uh, the government eye. That's fantastic. I mean, I, I think back, you know, because I, I, mean, I, I watched over the years and, um, <clears throat> you know, just uh, uh, still marvel at all of you women who served the city. And I just don't think that, you know, we should ever forget uh, what you've contributed to the city. So I, I'm glad you all kind of get together and have some girl talk from time to time and 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 critique. <laughs> critique, I'll leave it there. <laughs> well, thank you very much and thank you for having me on. All right, we'll and talk you soon. Up your good work. The informer has done an awful lot for this city in providing information and it's something that uh, we all need to continue to be involved with. I so appreciate that. All right. Well, you take care of yourself and we'll talk soon.